You want to know how to live stream your iPhone or iPad screen to YouTube and in part 1 I showed you the basics. But now you want more, so in part 2 these are some advanced tips to make your live stream look awesome. So as I said this is part 2 of how to live stream your iOS screen to YouTube. If you haven't seen part 1 yet, click on the link on screen now to get right up to speed. And just remember, this method requires a PC or a Mac, so if you haven't got one, don't bother watching. Ok, a couple of things to clean up from part 1. Your air server program. In part 1 I recommended Lonely Screen or a Powersoft, but after several live streams I would definitely recommend a Powersoft. The streaming quality is higher with Lonely Screen, but it seems to have a huge hit on streaming performance causing a lot of lag. By no means is a Powersoft perfect, but it is free to do the streaming side of things and it doesn't lag as much as Lonely Screen. Next on the agenda is audio, make sure people can actually hear you. When you do either a preview stream or a live stream you should be able to see the mic level and in game volume level in OBS as indicated by two red bar charts. You can click and drag on the volume graph to adjust the levels so that the viewers get the right amount of game audio and commentary. Weirdly I found that you have to put the volume on a Powersoft down to 1% but there you go. Ok so this is what my typical live stream looks like and my job is to get you to this point by the end of this video. From part 1 there are two main things I've added. All these labels, pictures and background imagery are what's called an overlay, or in this case an underlay. It's an image that sits in the back of my scene with everything else on top. The other cool feature is the live stream live chat. I've done this by capturing the chat from the YouTube live stream window on my web browser. Now I'm quite proud of that, that's a pretty awesome custom feature that I've created and I'll show you how to do that later, but first let's have a look at the overlay image. It all starts with a Photoshop file. I got this one called Sensor Titolo-2. I'll leave a link in the video description so once you've downloaded the file and opened it in Photoshop it should look something like this. Already this has layers such as characters and a box to put your webcam in and the title of the game. Each of these layers you can click on and move about the screen so it's up to you how you want to design it and you will probably will need a little bit of Photoshop experience to get the look and feel that you want. In this particular example I'm just going to resize the game title and duplicate the box on the left hand side so that I have a live chat box. I'm going to add some text too and if you're interested in knowing what font this is it's called Supercell and I'll leave a link in the video description to download it, it's free. Now if all this looks far too complicated then simply head on over to Google and search for Clash Royale Overlay or whatever game you intend to live stream. There's plenty of templates you can download and use, they will just lack the custom elements that I've added to my overlay. When you've finished editing your own overlay or downloaded one, open up OBS and start a preview stream so you can work out where everything needs to go. In the source box at the bottom you want to add a new source and this is going to be your overlay so select image. Give it an appropriate name and then locate the image on your computer and click OK. This is likely to put the image on top of everything else but that's easily fixed by right clicking on the source, hover over order and then click on move to the bottom. This will put the image underneath everything else so it should now start to look like a live streaming screen that you can work with. The edit scene button will allow you to move and resize your webcam and iOS streaming screen. If you need to change the aspect ratio of any of these boxes, hold down shift when resizing them but just remember that this will stretch or squash your image. Now at this point you could use that same Photoshop template to create as many overlays as you want. So whether it's Clash Royale, Clash of Clans, Super Mario Run or Minecraft, the scope of what you can create is limited only by your own imagination or Google. Ok let's move on to adding that live chat box and this is where things get a little complicated, but it is worth it. First of all you need to bring up your live stream YouTube page and make sure it's full screen. While OBS is streaming we need to leave this page running in the background so we can capture the chat box portion of the screen. So follow these instructions to the letter. Go back to OBS and drag it to the left side of your computer screen and then go to add source and choose window capture. Give the source an appropriate name and then make sure the window drop down is set to your live dashboard. Again drag this box to the left of your screen and then in the sub region section check sub region and then click select region button. 
Your entire screen should turn grey at this point, so what you need to do is resize this box until it covers the chat area of the live stream window. What we've basically done here is tell OBS to capture a small box from a web browser window. So when you're streaming, you must make sure this window is running your YouTube live stream in the background at full screen. And yes, this does require a lot of CPU and bandwidth, so it might be another reason why some of my live streams lag. But here's the result, you get a live stream of the chat which viewers can see and you can react to while you're live streaming, and from the tests I've done so far, the audience reacts really positively to this. Just be aware however that you might need help moderating some of the comments. And there folks are the tools and tips you need to get your iOS live stream looking a little more professional and presentable to your audience and you can do all this for free. Now I confess I'm still fairly new to all this so I'm still learning the ropes too so if I discover anything else that I think might be useful I'll bundle it all into a video along with any common questions that come from all of you. If you did find this guide useful I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and for more stuff just like this it's about time you subscribe to the Video Gadgets Journal. Enjoy the rest of your tech day and indeed your live streaming shenanigans, bye for now.